For almost 30 years, starting in the late 1970s, my favorite art gallery in Philadelphia was the Charles Moore Gallery. Its rise and fall would make a fascinating film, and maybe someday I can do that. But meanwhile, I recently asked Mr. Moore to reminisce a bit about his long-standing relationship with the artist Frank Heider. Okay, can you hold that? Right. I don't want to do this. Yeah, no, no, no you're good, good, good. Okay, just just a little high. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, all right, Chuck. So, you have any good uh, Frank stuff? Too many. You don't have enough to tell. Frank. I knew Frank. Uh, see, in the 1970, six. I first met him. Always was a talented painter. Always very energetic doing two jobs at once all the time. Then I started showing him in 1979 uh, when I first opened the gallery. Um, we made a deal one night. Uh, it was, he had so much work when I visited him. That he said, I can, show, I can give you a show every year. First I fought him and said, no, you can't. you got to make money. You have to do this. I can't devote my whole life to you. <laughs> and I ended up showing him for almost every year for 25 almost, uh, years. Uh, We'd have an annual show, do Christmas shows, do summer shows, and I watched him go from being a, a representational painter to uh, being an abstract painter to a representational painter again. And in the meantime, raising a whole family. I think he had first one child to begin with, and he had uh, he, the family just grew and grew. Uh, he, he and Helen lived, I admire them tremendously, because they lived in like one room and painted they scrimped and saved and put everything they could into that, uh, the, the artwork uh, and buying more materials. I think some days he would rather buy more paint than he would buy food. Frank is, uh, I used to tease him, I'd say he's not a painter, he's a force of nature. Things I notice about Frank, is besides his sort of vigorous drawing style and everything like that, is that I think his sense of color was much more enhanced than anybody else I had ever seen. You study the physics of or physiology of it, I think color cones, his sense of value and color and arrangements was much more developed than most artists that I've ever seen. It match a color perfectly in any time. You'd see him try to approximate what he saw in, ter in terms of pure color, and he understood color intuitively. I think that probably there was always an urgency about what he was trying to say that came off in his work and made it very compelling because the speed of his approach uh, translated to a passion and urgency to the paintings. He always had this ability to sort of take a beeline to what he saw in the work first as a way of taking up a, a direction from what he saw or he was thinking about and just chasing it down. That was always admirable about his work. If he did have doubts, it was sort of worked out through the paintings, whereas as opposed to a philosophical doubt, should I do something or not, he seemed to sort of play with like an endless Rubik's Cube, and he'd come up with a, always an original or a different solution for himself. I found that very compelling. He showed a lot of work. He would seek out different mediums. Remember the year he discovered ceramic tiles or printmaking, he would just cons be consumed with the, uh, the new medium as a way uh, of expressing himself. He was a traditional, non-traditional painter. It's the kind of thing that you'd think of a Renaissance master who discovered something he would try to milk every nuance out of it and push the medium further than anybody you know, anybody else. I don't think he was particularly quick on slow studios work. He wasn't that kind of painter, but he did sort of test things, test the boundaries of whatever he could, artistically, conceptually, physically sometimes. The work was always leading towards sort of a sculptural aspect of it. I remember thinking his work at its core reminded me of Spanish or uh, Baroque sculpture and niches like you see. I think that's a lot of things that sort of connected me with his work, his uh, sort of sense of a larger art world thing. I always thought of Frank's use of metal leaf sculpture, patterns of folds, things like that in his work as being much more at the heart of his aesthetic. Of course it would be all modernized to a contemporary context, but you know, at the heart of it is sort of uh, painterly flourishes and shapes intertwined ellipses that seems to be a consistent aspect of his work. I always enjoyed that, very energetic. When he changed from just straight painting to those kind of woodcut things, what did you think when that happened? Well, there was a transition. There was a period of trying to get larger and larger forms in his straight paintings. So he was taking from American scene paintings to larger figures, monumental figures in his paintings led to larger faces and whatnots in his work, uh, the woodwork. 
the woodwork came out of this notion of showing materials. Printmaking is a very meticulous, can be a very meticulous, process-oriented, clean way of making artwork. As printmakers, the fingerprints on the edges, things like that, the condition of the prints, the placement of the block, are all sort of technical things that are prized amongst print collectors. Frank was completely, you know, if you could be an expressionist printmaker, the prints would come out. <laughs> it was very frustrating because they'd come up crooked on the page, off-center, and things like that. The idea of a, un a constant addition would be an impossibility for him. And I think it's almost out of his personality as well as his working methodology. He realized that it was much more of a direct statement to work on the block and not necessarily the print. I think he also would, would get himself into a trance about that, where he'd work for hours and hours on this thing and work on the block, and he'd cut it down before you know it. He told me when he, he decided to realize that the most important thing about the woodblock process was the actual wood. He liked that material. And that was a quick jump to nailing the negative spaces that he had taken off back onto the, the woodblock. What was his most uh, successful work, in your opinion? Too big a question. Too big a question. <clears throat> How about financially successful? You know, he had a nice little uh, commercial line of the uh, figures on the beach. He could have kept on making those for a while. I think the large jungle pictures when he went away to Venezuela, there was something going on in there. He sold an awful lot of those. I think the sort of the uh, red and black from the first catalog in New York was probably formally more successful. Uh, you talk to any artist, that, you know, what they're doing right now is their most successful. <laughs> the red man at the Newman Gallery. <laughs> the basic structure that I was building these forms from and decided to create just that structure as sort of like the skeleton and put it off to the side.